So, if you remember from from last week, so we were halfway through a problem. Uh, so let's um, let's see if we remember what was going on. So um, really, really related rates problems are. Um, I think there's only this course only has two kinds of word problems, which is kind of sad. Everything should have word problems. Um, but anyway, you have two, you have two or more quantities and they're related in some way. Uh, and then you're, you're asked, uh, at what speed does one change if you know what speed, uh, the rest of them change? It could be that you're given, um, that you're given more than two things or although it's all the same. <clears throat> Um, and honestly, the key to solving these problems and solving everything is reading carefully and writing the information, um, writing the information as, as organized as you possibly can. So the problem we were halfway through on Friday was the problem of, um, a ladder resting against the wall and falling down. And then looking at what happens to the, at what speed the top is moving, if we know what speed the, the bottom is falling. Um, I don't have anything around me. I can, I can play a ladder. So um, anyway, we were told, uh, we already did all the, we did most of the work because we wrote the information. So we said there's a ladder, uh, normally walls and floors. Um, unless an architect really sucks at their job, uh, they're in 90 degree angles or the architect is very artistic and ladders uh, tend to be straight lines. Uh, so we decided to call this distance X, the distance uh, from the wall, the distance is changing, we're told at a rate of one foot per second. Um, so we wrote that down here. And then we were wondering if we're sitting here at the top, um, at what speed we're falling down. So we probably care about what, what speed we're falling down means. Uh, look at the rate of change of your height. So we gave a letter to the height, we called it Y. Um, and we're wondering what dy dt is. Um, oh, and it seems that I forgot to write down what I'm, what is the quantity I'm looking for, which is the most important piece of information. Um, so dy dt, this is the answer I want. <clears throat> okay, so that's all the information. Um, and then the question is, what is the relation between the quantities? Well, there's only the other quantities that there are, are X and Y and we we already figured out actually. Let's just redo this because that was just a preview from from Friday. But today I'm actually going to do it carefully. So um, the relation between them is that x y the 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 floor the wall and the ladder form a right triangle. Um, and right triangles, uh, the three sides have a relation between them. Um, for whatever reason, it's like the most famous theorem in math because it's not in middle school, right? That's why it is. Um, anyway, the square of the of the short sides added together equals the square of the hypotenuse. So, um, so we have an equation x squared plus y squared equals 10 squared. 
And when we have a relation between the variables, and we're trying to find, in this case, dy dt, that's what I just told myself. I wrote in red down there. Uh, I said, this is what I want. Um, I can get dy dt here by taking, taking derivatives with respect to time. and solving for y prime. So the key to doing this is remembering that you got to use the chain rule. So um, I'm so lazy. I'm not even writing 100 for 10 squared. So the thing is, it doesn't matter. Um, so uh, so what are we doing? So um, on the left here, well, the right is easier. On the left, we're supposed to take the derivative of x squared, but this is not the derivative with respect to x. So the derivative of x squared with respect to x is 2x. Um, and this is not the derivative with respect to t. Um, so don't be tempted to write 2x in there, because if you, if you do that, honestly, nothing's going to make sense. Um, the, to find the derivative with respect to t, we need to use the chain rule. Um, the chain rule says if you want to take the derivative with respect to x, first you take the derivative. Uh, sorry, if you want to find the derivative with respect to t, you can take the derivative with respect to something else and then multiply by dx dt in a way uh, that it looks like they cancel, even though these are not fractions. So um, so now I do have dx squared dx, which the chain rule says is 2x. And I also have dx dt, which I don't, which, well, I have, um, I just know it's 6. Uh, no, it's 1, sorry. It's, it's here. Uh, So I can just leave it there because I know I can plug it, I can plug in its value. And for the same reason, exactly the same, the derivative of uh, y squared is the derivative of y squared respect to y times dy dt. So, you know, you can, uh, whenever you're doing plus differentiation, you can do this in your head, it's always the same. Take the derivative with respect to the letter you see, take the derivative with respect to x, multiply by x prime. Take the derivative with respect to y, multiply by y prime. Um, the only important thing is that you don't forget to multiply by y prime. So dy, so dy dt is the thing that we want. So I'm also gonna leave it there. So this is known. And this is what I want. Um, do I know? Do I know x and y? Um, I know x. Let's see if I know y. So um, taking the derivative, putting all of these together, I have that two x derivative of x plus two y derivative of y equals uh, derivative of ten. Uh, the 10 squared der derivative of 100. So how does 100 change as uh, the time passes? Well, here's the thing about uh, numbers. They don't change when time passes. Uh, 100, the difference between 100 now and 100 a second from now is zero. The derivative of a constant is zero. <clears throat> so, um, so that's my equation relating 
the, the derivative that I want with all the other derivatives, all the other um, quantities. I can write it like this as well, just because just because it's shorter. Um, and now I want to find y prime. So I'm going to solve for it. And I know, I know when I do implicit differentiation, this is always easy to do. Just um, put your uh, y primes on one side, your non y primes on the other, divide by anything that's multiplying. Uh, this I should be where it is y equals zero here. Um, and it's not. I have negative 2x, x prime divided by y, 2y. Uh, the two scan so this is negative x over y times x prime. All right. Any questions so far? Um, how did the x prime? Cancelled out in the fraction. What did I cancel an x prime? Like, so when we, um, oh, I see. What, never mind. I thought for a second, I got it. It just got moved out. I was confused. Thank you. Oh. Oh yeah. It's just I don't know. Look prettier. Doesn't matter. I could write um, x prime in the denominator uh, in the numerator already there. So I'm trying to find y prime. Uh, so do I know everything on the on the right hand side? Uh, I don't. I'm not sure. Um, let me let me copy once again the stuff we know. We know that x equals six. Uh, that x is changing um, by one foot per second. And I know the, the Pythagorean theorem. <clears throat> and now I know that y prime equals negative x over y times y prime. So I guess, um, oh, hmm. X, x prime that would be uh unfortunate if there was a y prime there so um the well i know um x equals six um x prime is one Um, why is eight? Why is eight? Uh, how'd you get eight? Um, because y is equal to 10 squared minus 36 squared, the root of 10 squared minus 36 squared. Wait, I mean minus six squared, sorry. Uh, yeah, so we, we do know, secretly we know why, if you know, you know, this was the latter was here. Um, if we know how far uh, how far horizontally the ladder is, we should know how high up the top is. Uh, if we know that x squared plus y squared, thank you, Adam. You answered the question before I asked it. So um, we know that x squared plus y squared equals a hundred, and I can get y from here. So often in these problems, there, there's information that is um, it's there, but it's not explicitly there. So x equals six. Um, so that would mean that 36 um, 
plus y squared equals 100. And that would mean that y equals um, the square root of 100 minus 36, which is the square root of 64. Um, so why not negative eight? Because a length, the length of the side can be negative. Why not? I'm not sure. I get one. I mean, I guess if you think of it as a length, uh, you write that lengths can be negative, but heights can be. You can be below the ground. But so I guess uh, depending on what you think y is, if you think y is the length of that piece of wall. The length cannot be negative. If I think of it, if I think of it as the height of uh, as the as the height of the ladder, that definitely can be negative because I guess this is this is y equals zero. Uh, the thing is, the ladder the ladder is above the ground, so y definitely has to be positive. Um, just because I understand the problem. Letter um, is not in a hole, I guess. So knowing that um, knowing that y is eight, um, I can conclude that y prime is negative six over eight, which is negative zero point seventy five. So um, x was in feet and the derivative of x was in feet per second. And well, this equation is in square feet. Um, what are the units of y prime? Wait, what was your question? What are the units? Is it feet? No. Is it like feet per second squared? Feet per second squared. Um, so you're, do either of you have a reason or are you guessing? Um, well, I just was like, we know that our X is in feet. And then we, when we solve for Y, I just, I knew it wasn't seconds because like we had to go through the squares and all that. So I guess I kind of guessed, I just like in, Intuition, I guess, but um, so so y prime is supposed to be the speed at which you're falling. Neither of these is speed. Well, I wasn't finished my thought. I just said feet, and then I was still thinking. But oh, ah. <laughs> but so um, do you, do you want to finish now? Yeah. Um. When is it? Feet squared. So it's an so that would make it an area. Oh, uh, it's not feet squared. Um, so okay, let me give you a hint. Um, we said y prime is negative x over y times x prime. So x was a distance. So x is speed. Y is speed, and x prime is a uh, speed. So it's feet per second. So uh, what's the result of all those units? Is it just foot squared over seconds? So that's, okay, so that's surface per second. Um, that's the, 
No, it's not. Um, that's not what I got there. If, if I do feed divided by feed times feed per second, what I get it, what I get is feed per second. Haha, <laughs> that's funny. Honestly, um, you guess everything but the answer. I guess you win some, you lose some. You're still, I mean, you two are still winning because everyone else is asleep. So. <clears throat> Okay, um, so so we got feet per second. Um, it's supposed to be a speed, and the speed, um, if I'm falling, if if it's it's the speed of uh, at which uh, height is changing, the height is measured in feet, um, and so the speed is going to be measured in feet in feet per second. But also, if you write it like this, um, uh, if you write a derivative in Leibniz notation, the units agree with the fact that with this quotient. So y is measured in feet and t is measured in second. So y prime is gonna end up being measured in feet per second. Just because um, the derivative is the limit of a quotient, the quotient of, well, delta y divided by delta t, that's a legit quotient. And you divide, you get the, the units for the quotient, and Taking the limit doesn't change the units. Just because this is the the limit of of this divided by that. So if it were feet per second squared, that'd be acceleration instead of speed. Uh yeah. Mm -hmm. Not that I require you to know that it, because this is not a physics class. Uh, but I mean, if you have, I mean, well, I guess we do talk about acceleration, but it, it's just useful to check that you got the right units. Um, because you can tell you if you made a mistake. Like if you, for example, if, you're, if you have a formula where you're trying to add uh, feet and feet per second, that's that's gotta be wrong. Okay, so um, why did I get a negative number? Is it because it's just falling down? That sounds very dumb, but. Um, I don't think it's so dumb. It, I mean, it, it, it should be falling down. Shelby, uh, did you have another opinion? Uh, no, I was just going to say the same thing, that since it was falling downward, the speed was negative. Um, well, you're right. The thing is, um, why is the height? So falling down means um, means that uh, height is decreasing. So you're right. Would we have to interpret this like as slope? Because technically, like the derivative is the slope of a curve at a point like do we have to put in context to that you don't have to um and it would be i mean you don't know the thing is here i don't know if you know anything i don't know if you know anything about why except for the derivative of one particular point um Um, so it would be, there wouldn't be much to say there, uh, honestly. These problems, the related rate problems, um, often you can't just, you can't draw a graph and figure out slopes um, because you, you don't have enough information to draw anything meaningful. So normally it's not very useful to use slopes. Um, <clears throat> okay, so so we're done. Success. <clears throat> okay. Um, any more questions? 
Uh, I have a question, and it's kind of a dumb one. But earlier when we did the known, um, no, it's on this page. It's on this page. Um, in the equation for x prime, I feel like I would accidentally like make the mistake of plugging in six and then taking the derivative of six. Well, it's good that you're aware of that because that, uh, that allows you to prevent you from doing that. If you do that, I mean, if you do that, you're gonna get a bunch of, every, every derivative zeros. is just gonna look like zero. Yeah, um, so we should usually always have the X prime, right? Like as a given or as something we have to find before this. Yeah, so in a related waves problem, you always have the rate of change of something and you ask for the rate of something else. Um, Otherwise, I guess it's a different kind of problem, probably a more boring one. The thing is, you, you have to drill this into your mind. If you want to take a derivative, you can't plug things in before, because then you make things, if you if you have x squared and you plug in x equals 3, it's no longer a function. I mean, it's a function, but it's just a constant function, and you're just always going to get 0. So you never plug in values before taking derivatives. You always take derivatives, and then you plug in values. Um, so I guess the first step is to recognize that you have a desire to do that so that you can start fighting against that. But if you do do that, you'll see, you know, if we, if you go x squared plus y squared, so if you do this wrong thing, you'll have um, a constant plus. So now you, what you're doing here is saying that x is always 6. So the ladder is not moving. x is always 6. So what's going to happen when you take the derivative? What's going to happen is that you're going to get the y is not moving either. Well, how could it move? It's always 8. Um, so you get 0 plus 2y, y prime, just like before, derivative of y times derivative of y squared with respect to y equals zero, so y prime is going to be zero divided by two y. So you get a y prime equals zero. So that's what happens every time you you plug in and then take a derivative. Um, So normally, I mean, you could, the answer could just be zero, but if you get, but here we got always zero. Oops. I mean, if you, if, you, if you get a zero, you should ask yourself, did I plug in before taking the derivative? Um, all right, any more questions? So everything in this Wait, page is so if we ever get zero, it always it should be we should never get zero is what no, I mean. You, you can get zero. You can or you can. You you it's possible that you get zero. Right. But That's if you do, nice. but you know if you if you don't get zero, you probably didn't make a mistake. You know, if you don't get zero, you probably didn't make this mistake. But if you do, maybe you did, maybe you didn't. Um Uh, yeah. Let me write that down. Maybe you should ask yourself, um, is there, is there, a re if you get zero and you don't understand why, maybe you should ask yourself about the problem. Is there, should, should this be changing at this point or should it not be changing? Um, wait, more questions?
Okay, um, let's do another one then. So there's, as you can see, nothing to this, to learning this except for doing a bunch of problems. Um, so here's something, something about psychology of inventing um, related rates problems. Uh, so where could I, so related rates problem, you need, you need to have some quantities that are related in some way. So there's gotta be some formula there. So how could I come up with quantities? Uh, well, I could, so basically there's two options and nobody has ever come up with another way of coming, coming up with calculus problems. Uh, either I give you a formula from some science, from physics or chemistry or biology or whatever, economics, computer science, but then I'm, I'm not expecting you to know these things. So I just give you a formula and if I give you a formula, it's kind of boring. Or where, where are there formulas that you already know um, they're in geometry? So often in these problems, you see like the, for example, in this one, you see the volume of cones and that kind of stuff. Just because, um, just because where else could I find formulas? Uh, so what are, is being bumped at, at a rate of two cubic meters per. So this is also copied from the book. Okay, um, so that's why sadly, maybe, I mean, if you don't like geometry, sadly there's geometry here. So I should, if there's a shape, um, I basically always I should draw a picture. Um, it's not that easy to draw a picture, uh, but we should, um, but it's helpful. We should always try, honestly. So there's a water tank with a shape of an inverted circular cone with base radius two meters and height something. If water is being pumped into the tank at some rates, find, find the rate at which the water level is rising. Uh, I feel like I don't understand what this is saying if I don't draw a picture. So there's a tank um, with the shape of a cone. So inverted, I think, I guess, um, this is a non-inverted cone, like a hat. Can't tell this right now. Um, I guess uh, uh, if he has the shape of a hat, it's a cone. And if he has the shape of an ice cream cone, that will make it an inverted cone. So, uh, so there's there's a cone, and I'm being told that the radius is two meters, and the height is four meters. So I can draw those in the in the picture. Um, so um, there's water in here. Um, there's more than water at the beginning. So there's water. And water is coming in. And I know when water comes into containers, the water level rises. Um, so So there's, there's another height here, which is the water level. And at some point it's three meters deep. But of course, if, if I say always it's three meters deep, then water is not coming in or out. So um, you have to be careful with, with which things don't change and which things change. The cone, the, the tank is not changing shape over time. The, the water level is changing. So, um, okay. So, what quantities um, are involved here? I already and which quantity am I looking for? Which rate of change am I looking for? Um, so, well, um, 
I already wrote three of them. The radius of the tank. These two meters, um, the height of the tank is four meters. Uh, these are, I'm not going to give these letters because they're just always, um, well, maybe I, will, I don't know, uh, they're always the same. And there's the, then there's the water level. Which I'm going to call, um, let's say W for water. It's a, it's still a distance measured in meters. Um, and I'm told that at some moment, the water level is three meters. Uh, okay, so there's more quantities that are important here. You can tell that I'm not done because there's only, because I didn't say, first of all, because I didn't say which thing I'm looking for. Um, and probably because I didn't use every every piece of information in the in the question, although that could be a red herring, I guess. Um, and and also because there's only one thing. So if there's only one letter, I can't relate two letters or I need to relate at least two letters together. So what other quantities am I missing? The rate of change. The rate of change of what? Um, that the water is being pumped. So the water, okay. So the uh, rate of change. So you're, you're calling it a rate of change and it is. So the question is, what is that? What is that the rate of change? The rate of change off. Would it be like what the water level was initially, and then the rate of change as it like went to three meters deep? So um, would it be um two cubic meters per second? So. Okay, um, I think so. I think Sydney is talking about the 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 change in the water level. Um, um, and what uh, was it? Shall shall be a miles? Um, we are referring to is the rate of change in something else, which is the thing that we're told is two cubic meters per second. Um, So uh, nobody, so, so far, uh, nobody has told me what the quantity here is. What is this the derivative for? What, what other quantity is changing? Volume. Thank you, Sam. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Autumn. The, so another quantity that I didn't write in here is the, the amount of water, the amount or the volume. of water. So what do I what do I measure that in? How do I measure volume? But I mean what are the units? Um, uh, meters cubed, right? Meters, thank you very much. So the rate of change in how much water there is, the, the amount of water coming in is the derivative of, of the volume. Um, so there's, um, okay, so obviously there's more quantities involved here. The question is, do I care about any, any more of them? So for example, water in this, cone itself forms a cone, so that has a radius, there's a volume of the whole tank, um, 
there's, I don't know, there's, there's lots of things that I could invent here. There's the angle of the cone. The thing is, a lot of these aren't relevant. So the question is, are there any more relevant ones? And if there aren't, which is the one, which is the one I want? Don't we want the um, the change in water level, right? We want the, the change in water level. The rate level, at right? which it's. Okay, so um, I think I'm done writing things. Um, Are we gonna need the, uh, the formula for the volume of a tone? Probably. Um, so, now the, the hard part, um, I think the hardest part in this problem is figuring out, figuring out the relation between W and V. So, um, I'm gonna have to redraw the picture. So this is four and this is two. Um, and then there's water in here. So it's like a smaller cone of height W and volume B. So, um, so the next step, if you remember the list in the first slide, is find a relation between the variables here. So the relation um, is going to have to do with the volume of the cone, because B is the volume of a cone. Um, one, one important reason why I really need to draw a picture, at least in my head, uh, is we figured out somehow without ever saying it that the water, the, the water forms a cone. Um, and I guess I know that, but I, I know that because I look at the picture and I go, oh, the water uh, makes a cone. So, um, so, um, well, this is something you can just Google, but I remember that the, the volume of a cone or a pyramid is one third of the volume of the, of the base times the height. But I don't care if you know formulas or not. Um, um, volume formula. I care that you know the Prelog rule. <clears throat> so, um, if the cone has radius r and i h, no, oh, nothing to use on am I? Uh, then the volume is uh, one third of the base times the height. So the base is a circle. Uh, so the, the base is pi r squared. I feel like you should know pi r squared. And the height is uh, h. So the formula is one third pi r, r, r squared h. Or, you know, or Google it. OK, uh, I, don't, I don't know if I have r and h. h. Um, that's probably a problem. So, oh wait, I thought you did have R and H. Well, then tell me what they are. If I if I do have them, a... R is two. R two and H is four. So, that is the radius and the height of a cone. Uh, but that's so. Then I'm talking about the black cone here. And that is not the one I care about. So I could find that volume, but it's actually, it's not gonna be useful for anything. Uh, so. Um, would the height be three meters? Cause it says the water is three meters deep. The water, so the height is the depth. So, okay. So there's two cones, there's the tank. And then there's the water. Both are cones, both have, both have radii, 
radiuses um, and heights and volumes, but I care about the I care about the water cone. So is the height of the water cone not three meters? Because it's um, I'm getting the, there. So mm -hmm. it it is at some point, but the thing is, it's changing. The the water is being pumped in, so this this cone is growing in size. So if you say it's three meters, what you're doing there is plugging in three, and then that's gonna mess everything up. Then you're just gonna you're just gonna get um you're gonna do the same thing you, that happened before, where you take a derivative and you just get zeros, or you oh, might not okay. get zeros. Um, but this is not this is not three. It, it's three at some point, but it's changing. So this would we... is, what we're, is what we're calling W. So do we use the equation of the volume and like set it equal to the radius and then one to the height to kind of like, or would that be too complicated? What do you want to set equal to the radius? Um, or like, since we don't know the radius or the height, like do we have to use our equation for the volume? But then we still don't know um, that. I don't know what I'm saying. So. We don't. So far, we don't know the radius. The height, we we do know. <laughs> what we want to do is write it. So we want to write an equation, then take the derivative, and then we're gonna use that w is three. Um. So the thing is, I want to write that. Um. So what I know is that v, the volume of the cone of water, is uh pi over three times r squared times h. The height of this cone, I figured out it's w. Now, I have a problem. Um, the problem is that I don't know what r is. Not what it is, not, not that it, it's not gonna be a number. If you think about this, this cone, this ice cream cone filling up with water, the radius is of the surface is also changing, but I hope it has something to do with W and V. Um, otherwise, I'm kind of screwed. So, um, so that's the question. The question is, what does um, what it, what does R have to do? So, for example, um, so this is not this is just something to think about some um, to be able to uh, put our thoughts together. <clears throat> so, can can I find R given V? No, really? The thing is, I know, I know given B and W, I know R, uh, but if, what if I'm just given W? So, uh, for example, if W is three, then the picture looks like I have a, I have a cone of side of, I four and radius two, and inside of it I have a cone of I three. So can I figure out what R is in this picture? Or do I need more information? Maybe I missed something. Maybe I missed something in the in the problem. Can you go back to the problem really quickly? Yes, I can. Oh my God, it's like, uh, okay. well, um, yeah, I'm gonna have to leave it there. Um, well, um, there's a mystery for tomorrow. Woo!
Oof. These problems are long. It's really hard to do more than one. Um, what are your um the, your new office hours, by the way? 